I was in a school play, and somebody saw that, and they said, you want to come read for this professional play? I was in that. And one of the casting people, I guess, from Jaws 2 saw that play and, and, and brought me in to read, and, and I ended up getting the part. When I was cast, I was, I guess, 16 years old, and I was sophomore in high school, I think. And I was cast in March of one year, and I didn't finish working on the film till the next February. So it was basically 10 months that I was actually on the movie, uh, which is remarkable when you consider I've got about 20 lines in the whole film. But between firing directors and reshooting and hurricanes and shark sinking, and it was a, a, a massive chunk of time. We first went through four weeks of sailing training, and at that point the script was very, very different. I had like one line in that script, I didn't really have a character, I was just one of the kids on the raft. Uh, and then we started shooting with John, and about, I guess, two or three weeks, I don't remember exactly, into shooting with him, Universal wasn't happy, shut down the film, and then they hired Carl Gottlieb to come in and rewrite the script, and he did a, a pretty massive overhaul. And they brought in Janot Schwark and fired a lot of the cast. I think the fact that my part was so small in the first script is why I survived. You know, I was like, so I was sort of so under the radar that nobody thought to fire me. The other thing that was cool was with Janot, they let us improvise a certain amount, me and Tom Dunlop. We kind of wrote a couple of our little scenes together. Nah, she wasn't looking at me. What are you saying? She was staring at you and drooling. And there was a lot more chance to kind of add stuff in, too, which was really kind of fun for me because I was interested in filmmaking. So it was a very slow process getting the film made. But for somebody like me who was 16 years old and on my own for the first time and fascinated by film, it, it was great. It was what an adventure. <laughs> There was a whole squad of, of sailing teachers, including, you know, I guess Olympic sailors. And, and, you know, most of us were a bunch of New York and L.A. kids. We didn't know sailing. And there was about four weeks where we just basically worked on sailing every day, which was great at times, painfully boring at others, because they would ba tell us to go out and sail. And again, we're, Navarro Beach, there's nothing there. So we'd basically go out and just go back and forth. Uh, and then they made us do that too during shooting, whenever there'd be times when the shark would be broken down and they couldn't shoot. They'd say, well, everybody go out and practice sailing. No. <laughs> the other thing they had is they had this crazy military guy, Frank Sparks, I think is what his name was, who'd, who'd worked on the first Jaws, who was an ex-Navy SEAL. And they hired him to get us all into good shape. Because we were all, again, you know, a bunch of kids. We, none of us were in good shape. And he was like, it was like something like being in the Navy. Although I will say we all got in pretty good shape. I just, it was remarkable that nobody died in the process. <laughs> I'd like to go to the lighthouse with you. Anytime you get a bunch of teenagers and kids in their early 20s, what happened was cliques formed. There were always groups, two, three, four people who all got along with I mean, nobody, there were no real enemies. I don't remember any terrible fights, although I think over the course of shooting, there were romances and romances that got, went awry, and this girl was just with this guy, and then she broke up and went over to here, and then these two guys were pissed at each other because of that. But it never devolved to the point of, like, fighting or, you know. Again, whenever, whenever you get a bunch of teenagers in one place together, you're going to get sex and, and clicks. Mr. Christon, Mr. Christon, pump up this belt. Shave off that dreadful mustache. England expects every man to do his duty. That was just something that Carl wrote for me because of this whole idea of, of Doug being kind of this weird class clown guy. This will be our final hour. I'd never worked with squibs before, and so I was completely terrified when this thing blew up that made the hole in the books. I didn't realize how loud, I mean, it was like this gunshot going off, and no one warned me, so I had this big jump reaction, which you can kind of see in the movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, Bly, someone pop your balloon? No problem. No problem. It wasn't scary because it was like, oh, it felt like a real shark. It was scary because it was a huge piece of mechanical equipment that could only could control only so well. And that was the sled shark, which is the one they pulled behind a boat, coming at high speed, and it just worked out perfect. When they hit my boat with that thing, I got knocked you know, into the water and got, got a little bit tangled up in it, got dragged along for a little ways. So there was a certain feeling of danger that went along with that. You know, they tried to be very safe, and they had divers and all that stuff, but, but it was this however many thousand pound piece of equipment being dragged through the water at high speed aimed at you <laughs> and they're kind of going okay we hope this will look right when it hits you um, so there was uh, there was definitely some scary moments with that there was always that thing of what else was in the water that you didn't know about certainly you're just thinking about sharks all the time so there's also that, that mindset is going on of what else might be out here you know and forget the mechanical ones what about the real ones that might be hanging out 
think it's gonna work. Come on, Patrick, port, port! Keep it going, keep it going, we're gonna make it, just keep it turning! That was not a real island, I think they took a, a barge, and then they built plastic rocks basically all over the outside. It's a very impressive piece of, of production design. Uh, and, I, and I think it cost a ton of money too. And it was weird because could, they could tow it around and you'd look out and there'd be this, this, this island being towed different places. And in fact, some of the stuff was shot very close to shore. And there'd just be this island kind of surreally sitting out there just you know, 100 feet. <laughs> The hardest thing with it was, of course, the, the rocks were very slippery because they were plastic rocks. So actually climbing out of the water onto it was very just difficult. You couldn't, you couldn't get your handhold on it at all. I remember one of the camera operators actually got like singed by the because they, you know, the problem with pyrotechnics is you never know exactly how big it was going to be. Again, this was not the time when people were doing digital effects to create that stuff. It was, it was pretty impressive. Uh, it was pretty exciting. And, and, and I remember that was the first time I'd ever been on a shoot where they had like five different cameras going. And uh, it took a lot of hours before they finally shot it because they knew they only had one shot at it. Once that thing was charred, it was charred. And, and, and they didn't have extra sharks to go around, you know, burning more of them. He did it! It's, you did it! It's dead! He did it! It's dead! It's dead! <laughs> As sequels go, I think it's certainly more successful than a good deal of them. I think it, it captures a lot of what was good about the first film. Um, one of the things that's, that's interesting when, you, when, when I look back at Jaws 2 is, is how many of the people moved on in different ways. You know, Jeffrey Kramer, who played Hendrix, who's now a huge TV producer, to Billy Van Zandt, who's gone on to be one of the most successful television writers. I went on and did a lot of other work as, a, as an actor, both in film and in theater. Uh, I was in Christine, and I was in Dress to Kill, and I was in Back to School. Uh, but I've also now, I've been a director for about 12 years and making sort of independent films. Um, and a lot of what I learned, I started on that, I mean, I learned on that on Jaws too. I mean, being on that set for months and months and hanging out in that editing room, watching all the dailies, watching what we did that worked and didn't work. Um, it was a great education and, and, you know, what a great way to start into a professional career. Mm -hmm.